Hey everyone, I'm Alfred. We're back in Master Chief Collection. Because you may notice, done quite a lot of these, but we're missing a few. And you know what? Hey, it's a. Uh, I'm out of practice. It's Halo Day again, so we're back in. And you know what? It's time to finish this fight. <sighs> they let me pick. Did I ever tell you that? Choose whichever Spartan I wanted. You know me. I did my research. Watched as you became the soldier we needed you to be. Like the others, you were strong and swift and brave. A natural leader. But you had something they didn't. Something no one saw but me. Can you guess? Eight foot dick. Luck. Oh. Was I wrong? first Halo game I've ever played, and it's the first time I'm playing it in years. Oh man, look at that letterboxing. Oh. This ain't good. Damn. How far did he fall? Two kilometers. Easy. Stay sharp. His armor's locked up. Gel layer could have taken most of the impact. I don't know, Sergeant Major. Right in my face, dog. Radio for Vito. Heavy lift gear. We're not leaving him here. Yeah, you're not. Oh, crazy fool. Why do you always jump? One of these days, you're gonna land on something as stubborn as you are. And I don't do bits and pieces. Where is she, Chief? Where's Cortana? Don't make a girl a promise. If you know you can't keep it. She stayed behind. Corporal, make it quick. Sorry, sir. Your armor's still in partial lockdown. Look up here, sir. Okay. Now down here? Good. Everything so at the out, time, Sergeant this Major. was the first first-person shooter I'd corporal. ever played He's on a controller. Well, like a traditional game pad. Wait, wait! Arbiter's with us! Come on now. We've got enough to worry about without you two trying to kill each other. Were it so easy. <laughs> uh, I love these guys. We must go. The brutes have our scent. And they must love the spell of greed. All right, here's the worst gun in the game. Thank you. So yeah, at the time uh, when I first got this game, it was like the third game overall I had even gotten on my 360. It might have been the second. First um, squad, you're my scouts. Move out, quiet as you can. Oh my god, this looks so fucking good. Yeah, this was the first game that I'd ever played on a gamepad, as opposed to like keyboard and mouse or like a moving, Nintendo Wii Come on, I'll lead you out. I'm well aware that it's called a Wii Remote, but you know what? It's a Wii Remote. Be frank with ourselves here. Up and over, Chief. 
I remember being able to see my own knees and losing my mind. I was like, whoa, Bravo, team, it's like I'm us. really there. Ball back to the extraction point. Like, I was like, oh man, games can't possibly get better than this. You know, in the first two minutes of Halo, just being able to look down and see my own knees and feet on like 480p on a 360 with a CRT TV. I was like, wow, it's the best looking game I've ever seen. And at the time, it was. That was true fact. Johnson, you be advised. Hostiles are on the move. I've got eyes on a brute pack. Over. You say again, Gunny, you're breaking up. And, like, this is a, honestly a bad place to start because, like, I had no idea who Cortana was. I had no idea that the Arbiter was, wasn't Major. ordinarily Head with us. Inbound. Like, I had no idea what they meant by Cortana had stayed behind, who Cortana was, what behind was, what that meant. Like, this was the first Halo game I'd ever played, and, like, at the very least, 3 starts with a, or, uh, ODST, I should say, 3 ODST, starts with that opening crawl of, like, hey, humanity's in a war and they're losing, yada yada, etc, etc. Go time. Oh yeah, so this game introduces the uh, equipment, which at the time I had like no idea. The prophets are liars, but you are fools to do their bidding. I kind of like the. Sorry, I'm just trying to figure out my buttons here. I kind of like the system of um, system. Work with me, Brian, here. The system of... Equipment as opposed to armor abilities coming on. And you might even see that they might have even wanted armor abilities to be included in here. Okay. One and two. There we go. Considering that he's, they say his armor's locked up, and armor lock is in reach, an ability designed to make it so you can take more damage. Yeah, obviously we've got the, uh... Look out! There's more! We've got the dual wielding back from 2. Because it was very important that that be brought in. Sorry, I'm not talking very much because I'm just having a goddamn good time. It's the third video I record I have recorded today, and ordinarily I like to be a bit more fun in my videos. But I will say some people appreciate how boring I am. Let's uh it lets them leave me on in the background of things. Jumping off this will kill you, actually. I usually record uh two games at a time. First thing, I think it is. Here? I remember being jawed at by a purple space ghost at around here ish. I don't know, maybe I'm misremembering. But I remember that was very confusing for me as a kid. Eventually I picked it up and I was like, okay, it's a space ghost. Is 
is a good this is a good level in general, but also it's a good tutorial level. are so cute, man. They never will not be. Never will. That's right, right? I don't know why I'm trying to be fancy. Man, this sound of this shitty ass gun is pretty iconic. But yeah, um, by this time, what was I a fan? I think I had played Half-Life by now. Keep I'm pretty sure that I had, um... I'd had a Wii for a couple years at this time. Um, and I think I... I'm pretty sure I had played Team Fortress 2 by now. Because I remember, like, often comparing Reach to Team Fortress 2. I don't know if that's the case for three. I don't know if I'd like, cause this was one of the first, like first person shooters I'd ever really hey, like Richie. sat down to play. And what's more like, I think there's a one hit thing out of this game. Weird. One of the first first person shooters I'd ever like properly yeah, sat down and just really played. And so it just like it really hits me in such a weird place. Come. The landing zone is this way. Is this the one? Tell me its location. Here's my ass. <laughs> I like how they were like, wait, let's see where he's going with this. Maybe he'll do something good to this man he's holding. I have no idea where this is, to be perfectly honest. I remember a boat that I was on. Sir, finishing this fight. I'm on Earth, aren't I? Where on Earth am I? I guess somewhere in Africa, right? Man, and these guys got got, huh? Yeah, when I was a kid, I barely understood, like, my butt to my ass. Like, I got through Halo games very, very casually. I was not good at them. I did not do a good job playing them. I was just generally a dummy. Like... I primarily managed to get through it by uh, playing them through co-op with my sister and then just hoping that both of us wouldn't die. Uh, on easy mode, we usually would rely on grenades and NPCs to help us finish the fight and like we did not do a good job. And uh, because this was the thing, this is the one, isn't it? There we go. Could you sacrifice me to complete your mission? Yeah. Could you watch me die? So you just randomly get... Well, it's not random. It's pretty terrible, yeah, but... Your vitals just ping KIA. Occasionally, Cortana will send you messages and or you'll get memories, I guess, Jeez. of uh, of her. We got company, so hustle up. Grenade. I remember getting stuck here as a kid. Yeah, like, I would rely on grenades just like, thoughts of what try and just like try to brute force my way through levels. Oh man, we're in there. Oh man, I remember hearing like, 
Hang on. Get a hold of her. We're going down. I remember right, you can actually There you go, you can. You can even see fish. I don't know why Bungie felt the need to model fish and like really even model the bottom of this lake. Because it's not like it does anything. Yeah, when I first beat uh, Halo 3, it was it was a messy, ugly thing. Uh, just because it was the style at the time. My uh, copy of 3 came completely with like two weeks of Xbox Live or something. Uh, and like, just through doing like, rando matchmaker on, on Xbox Live, I had managed to find like, two friends, one of whom I do not remember. Uh, but also this isn't one of those tragic like, you know, I seen online 4,000 years ago, like, stories. Uh, I didn't like the guy. He was a friend by happenstance. The kind of friend that you make in school because you have the same class and like... The kind of school that you make in friend because you happen to like share a classroom. So I'm looking around for different guns. I just want to try new... There we go. Want to try new fun things. But yeah, you don't need to make those kinds of friends when you're not in class. So, you know, after I lost contact with, uh, and I did not make any effort to engage it. Sue me, I guess. So yeah, when first playing through Halo, uh, I did so on online multiplayer. I mean, my sister were the first and second player, so we were choosing armor. And then the other two random assholes who show up for, like, co-op. It's just like two other elites that just kind of happen to be there. I remember in the last level, you have to do a big old Warhog ride. Warthog Ride. Much in the same way that you have to do at the end of Halo 1. Uh, because, you know, Bungie does love to circle back around on the things that they've done before. They, in fact, adore the shit out of it. But yeah, we had both died, and it was, uh, I remember just, like, feeling so embarrassed for my sister for some reason. She had, like, God, fucking memories. Like, last level of Halo 3, you have to do a, a big old Warthog ride, much like you do at the end of Halo 1. And I remember that, like, our Warthog got toppled, and my sister's, on, like, correct ex. course of action was, of course, to jump out and just run it because she, you totally have a chance to make it and then she was just dead for the entire rest of the level and then i died more towards the end but what this meant is that two randos in story and out of story were the ones driving the like the warthog see that was just too cocky Two randos, in story and out of story, were the ones actually driving the Warthog. So, like, on, two people you who you never heard of before and are basically created just so the campaign has a third or fourth player, were the other ones driving the Warthog. And then, like, the game puts Chief in the, in the boat at the end as though he actually made it. Which is one of those things that I do love about Halo. Like... It does not have a story made to fit its cutscenes. Rather the other way around. Or no, I've done that backwards. Anyway, like, no matter how much time you have left on any given timer. Like, no matter what, if you get there, 
The cutscene always says that you're just at like 1% Damn. They killed the chief. The cutscene will always say that you had 1% left. Come on, you dumb apes! Racist, Johnson. You want breakfast? You gotta catch him! I remember that, like, this being my start of Halo was, like, such a bad place to be to get into Halo. Because the fight was being finished. How could you, how could you possibly get in the fight's being finished? And, of course, you know, it turns out I found some more fight in the back to finish later, but... Until then, all I had was Halo Wars, which is pretty cool. ODST, which takes place at the same time as 2 and does not feature Chief. And, uh, Reach, which is also free. And granted, Reach is a fantastic shooter, and, like, really helped color my opinion of, of Halo. Mostly because it's good and, in fact, better than any other Halo game, I think. It, it's the best Halo game where you play as a Spartan. Um, I think ODST is the best overall, but I digress. You walked in front of my bullets, not the other way around. So yes, it's a long-standing tradition by now. Uh, Reach was the first real LP that I ever did on my channel. Um, I unfortunately realized that that was the incorrect thing to do. Uh, because Halo Wars is actually the first, like, earliest game in the timeline. But yes, I have been going through Halo game by game, piece by piece, in order, about as accurate to the main timeline as I can. Um, See how they beat their trap? In the actual uh, playlist, Wars is put oh, correctly is before Reach, which is where it's supposed to be. And in fact, ODST is put in the middle of 2, which is also where it's supposed to be. things that really makes you appreciate regenerating health. A good corner to hole up in. But now I have given an immense amount of discussion to the uh, differences between non and regenerating health. Long time viewers will know that overall I probably much prefer uh, regenerating health. Nope, not regenerating health because it will always force the player to be more... Yoink. It'll always force the player to be more proactive and aggressive. Because with regenerating health, the idea was to make the game quicker. Of my blades. And like, theoretically, it works. Because it's like, hey, you never have to wait for... You never have to go and look for more health. You can always be guaranteed that you're going to start every... Whoops. You're going to start every single fight at your max health, no matter what. Barring certain things that would uh, allow you to... Well, I guess I'm not going up that way. I can shoot along the other side. Um, barring certain things that allow you to go above your max health, but once those are gone, they're gone for good. 
and that's fine. You know, I think it's a good design. However, I will say, I, um... Oh no, he's here. I think that having non-regenerating health will always make a game way more aggressive. Because no, you can't lay back. You cannot lay on the cut. You have to get in there and you have to go. Though I do love stuff like this. Like, what weapons you have and don't have are really the determiner of how aggressive you can be. Because in this, you have much less health than your average, you know, FPS hero man. No, Chief does in general. Roger that, Hocus. Friendly gunship coming in hot. Stay alive. I don't know about that, Chief. I should work on cutting this. I have been trying to have shorter episodes. Um, no real reason, just a little easier on me. Love the sound. You love to see it, you know? Whoops. I really want to go back to my dad's house and pick up all the, uh, like, Halo action figures that I, like, lost, more or less. I'm like, I haven't really lost them. I know about where they are, but... Wow, I've never been back here. They modeled the shit out of this fucking environment, I'll tell you that. I've got to say, one of the most gratifying things in the world was to watch the documentary on the production of Halo 3. Because, wow, Bungie used to be such a cool company. They wasted hours and hours and hours of development time just playing deathmatch against one another. Just because they were just having fun with it. And yet, you know when you play that in the developmental standpoint, you do actually gain the ability to edit your game as it's being made. You get the ability to tune and balance the game before you have any idea that it needs to be. You know? It's not like we're going to have day one patches. It was properly tested, and exhaustively so, just because the main development team had a really fun time doing it. Which is one thing that you can really tell that like makes Halo different. Because obviously a Mike, lot of games you, that are like, look, it's a Xbox exclusive. They they milk it for all it's worth. Whoops. And it is a problem with any exclusive. If a company is paying you more so than you would normally expect to get a game, then you might get something that's a little soulless and corporate. Oh, I haven't done this in the first This isn't as fun as it looks. Cut the power. We're even. Long as we're only counting today. Kilo 2 3, what's your ETA? But with Halo, like, the fact that the devs had so much fun playing their own game is really encouraging. And you compare it to something like Gears of War, which is like, what are the kids like? They like space guys, they like alien wars. Let's hire Cliffy B to be an idiot on the dev team about it. And he was. And, like, made the whole, like, your wife is dead subplot all about his own divorce. And, like, I I really want to get in and actually go through the Gears of War because I have not really gotten... Uh, I don't think I've gotten a fair encounter of it, but I've got to say, Cliffy B does not lend a... Uh, director of Gears of War. Does not lend himself to a fair and just thing because he's kind of a dick. But like, you know, Gears of War does not have anything to do with Cookie B being a dick. I would say it actually does. Like, you can play Gears of War without Cookie B getting a weird hand. And for those who are completely out on it, Flippy B is just, uh, you know, a game director who consistently has, like, made bad decisions and been weird on Twitter and, like, tried to invite himself onto a fan's podcast 
when, like, no, I'm not talking about you to debate you. I think you're a dickhead. And the fact that you, like, frequently tell people that they didn't play my game right or yada yada, etc., etc., kind of shows that. I'm not debating you, Clippy B. Long story short. Um, this is probably a good place to cut the episode, though. So, uh, pardon the rambling, but this is what you get if you've never seen an, uh, uh, a video of mine. But I've been Alfred, uh, and this has been the first episode of Halo 3. Uh, and man, I'm finally finishing the fight. After the ending of Halo 2, which, by the way, I had never seen before, and that's my honest, fresh reaction to it. Wow. I am more ready than I have ever been in my life to finish this fight because considering how many times I finished this fight as a kid, I was just dicking around and, and shooting guys. I was just being a dumb kid in a, in a war. I didn't understand just doing things just because, but like now, now I'm in on the lore. Now I'm fresh and ready. Let's fucking go. So yeah, uh, I've been out for this has been Halo three. Uh, thank you guys for coming. I'll see you guys next time. Everyone have a nice day. Thank you.